Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin and welcome to part four of cool iPhone tips and tricks. I bet you didn't know. Let's do it. All right, so if you're anything like me, when you open Safari, you have a million tabs open. The first tip I'm gonna give you is how to close all of those at once and make it super easy. To do that, we're gonna go into settings and then scroll to Safari. Click into there. And then we're gonna scroll down to where it says close tabs. Right now it's set to manually, but if we go in, you can choose after one day, after one week, or after one month. If we wanna do after one day, we'll click that. And then after the day is over, Safari will automatically close all of my tabs. Having all of your browser tabs closed helps to increase your phone efficiency, so your phone will last longer. Have you ever been listening to a song or a video and you think to yourself, I really like this song, what is it? A lot of people like to use Shazam to find that. However, if you don't have Shazam, you can still find that song that you're just jamming out to. And you can find it really easy by adding music recognition to your control center. To do this, you just go into settings and then scroll to control center. Click on that. And then you just scroll down to more controls and you'll see this music recognition that has the Shazam logo. You click on the plus sign next to it and now that is in your control center. So if you open up your control center, scroll down and you'll see the Shazam logo. And all you have to do is click that and it'll start to recognize whatever song you're listening to. And just like that, it finds a song for you. This next feature was actually created as an accessibility feature for those who need it. That being said, it is available to everyone. So I'm going to show you how to use the back of your phone to access a ton of different features. So if we go into settings, and then scroll to accessibility, click into there, and then we go to touch, and scroll to the bottom, and you'll see back tap. If you click that, you can set double tap or triple tap to a ton of different functions. So if we wanna set a double tap, you go into here and you can see all these different things that your phone can do. It can take a screenshot, bring up Siri, change the volume, be a magnifier, a ton of different things. So let's set it to screenshot. And now, if I were to tap the back of my phone twice, it takes a screenshot. So that's a really cool feature for people who do need it, but then also if you just want quick access to any of those features that I just showed you. The next cool tip I have for you is how to screenshot an entire web page. So if I go into Safari and I'm on app.com and I decide I want to take a screenshot, I'll take my screenshot and you'll see this little thumbnail pop up here. If I go into that, you see that it says screen or full page. If I click over to full page, you'll see that there's a toolbar over here and it has actually taken a screenshot of the entire page that I was just on, despite the fact that I never even scrolled through it in the first place. If I wanna save that, I just hit done and then I can save it as a PDF to files. It'll save that as a PDF and now I have that entire web page. This next tip can get a little tricky and takes a little bit of practice to actually nail it, but I'm gonna show you how to move multiple apps at once. Sometimes when you have apps on your phone, you wanna move them from one screen to the next, but you don't necessarily wanna do it one at a time because that just takes a little bit of time. So instead, how you're going to do it is you're going to hold down on one of the apps until it wiggles, and you wanna keep holding even when they start to wiggle. You'll use your other hand to start tapping the other apps. It'll start a number counter, which I'm not sure if you can see here under my finger, but there's a little four under there. And then you can just drag this to the other page and put it wherever you want. And now you have all those apps there. And if you wanna move them back, just do the same thing. Tap and hold until it wiggles and continue to hold. Then use your other fingers to tap the other apps and you'll see that number. Go over to the other page and drop them on in there. You can also group apps together into folders in a similar way. You just tap and hold until they wiggle. And then you just drag the apps on top of each other. And it creates a little folder for you. And there you have it. If you want them out of the folder, you just do the same thing. Go into the folder, tap and hold until they wiggle, and just drag them out. Tape measures and spirit levels are invaluable tools when performing any household DIY task, but unfortunately, they're not always close at hand whenever you need one, right? Wrong! Enter your iPhone. 
you can actually take measurements and use your phone as a level anytime you want. So if I wanted to measure this piece of paper, I'll just take my phone and there's a circle with a dot in there. I'll add a point by hitting the plus sign and then you just drag your phone over until the other end and add another. And you can see that that is 11 inches and this is an eight and a half by 11 paper so that is correct. Another really cool thing is that you can see here that it has lines from here to here and all the way around the piece of paper. So if you actually want to add an entire rectangle, once you see all of that, you just hit the plus sign and it gives you the entire measurement. So the eight and a half by 11 and it'll give you the square footage and area. To use it as a level, all you have to do is switch over to level. I do want to warn you, I wouldn't go throwing away your measures and levels just yet because neither of these tools are completely accurate all the time, but they are useful when you're in a rush. So if I'm moving it like this, you'll see that it's red, so that means it's not level, but if I place it down, it'll turn green, and that means you are level. It used to be the case that if you wanted to scan a document, you had to go through a whole process of figuring out how a printer or scanner worked and then hope for the best. Not anymore. All you have to do is go into the Notes app, so you click Notes, and then you'll see this camera down here. So you click the camera, and then Scan Documents. Then you'll hold your phone over the document and you'll see that yellow box right there and it'll automatically start to scan your document. You can preview them, make sure everything looks good, and hit done. You can scan multiple documents in a row, go back to your notes and you'll see that it is right there. You can also sign documents on your phone, which is really helpful since a lot of things are moving to more online versus having to print out every form that you have, sign it, scan it, send it back. It makes the process a whole lot easier. To do that, you just find the document that you need to sign and then take a screenshot on your phone. You'll click into this little thumbnail that you get and then you'll click this little plus sign here. And then you'll see signature, click that. And then you just create your signature. Hit done. And then there's your signature. So all you have to do is move it around. You can resize it, make it bigger smaller, whatever you need, and then you just place it wherever you need it. So you can zoom in, and then you tap it, resize, and there you go. Hit done, save to photos, and now you've got a signed document that you can just send right off. If you have multiple iOS devices and they are all linked to the same Apple or iCloud account, it is easy to find them with your iPhone. For example, if you've misplaced your Apple Watch, you can't find it anywhere, and you're trying to leave the house, all you have to do is say, Hey Siri, find my Apple Watch. Looking for Caitlin's Apple Watch. It's nearby. Pinging Caitlin's Apple Watch now. The Apple Watch will then start playing a chime, which should continue until you find the device and turn it off yourself. This is super helpful if you're like me and you lose things all the time. And there you go. If you missed parts one through three, make sure you go back and check them out. You might learn something really cool. I'll see you next time.